My sincere greetings to every citizen of the Republic of the Gambia within and outside of the territory of our dear nation. My name is Isa Boker C. Uh, today I am engaged uh, by Upright Television um, to speak on our 58th independence anniversary or celebration. Uh, well, we are going to premise our analysis, I mean, uh, on these following lanes. First of all, um, we all know that the symbolic, I mean, uh, act of lowering the Union Jack and then raising the Gambian flag happened on the 18th of February. 1965. Uh, it was during the time of the first president of the Republic of the Gambia, Sadauda Kairaba Jawara. Well, the recording itself is being done at an edifice that is named after him. Uh, definitely uh, that in itself shows that Gambia honors um, its nationhood um, within the confines of the fine traditions of everything political and also where we identify ourselves as citizens. Uh, we cannot um, celebrate uh, the 58th independence I mean, I mean, uh, anniversary without reflecting on the first president who has done a lot and then it is him that Allah chose to be the catalyst of that particular event or I would say the process. But if we go back before the actual act of lowering the Union Jack happened, there were people also. I mean, I called that particular individual the Gambia's version of Nelson Mandela. It is Francis Edward Small. I mean, he began this fight, and uh, he was qualified in many ways, because Francis Edward Small, one would not say at that time that, yeah, he was Muslim, that's why he did not like the West. He was a Christian, but a Christian that harbored a hurt that remained a custodian of all faiths. Uh, Christians were in it, Muslims were in it, and uh, people that practice other forms of worship were in it. We all know the history of him ringing the bells in Balangar. Of course, Balangar <laughs> is not Banjul. Uh, so there is a reason why it happened. So the process began at that time, and then the ripple effects went through the contours of time, and then came to the era of Sadao da Kairaba Jawara, who definitely also held the flare in the dark tunnel of colonial rule, and then made sure that he led us through the path against all odds. I mean, there were times that Gambia's case was discussed as whether it is a viable state or not, but Sadada made it clear that it is not about the resources. Is, is about the moral standing that Gambia occupies in the psyche of the world society. So it's been vindicated. Gambia has been weathering the storm, and uh, we have gone through challenges like any other nation in the world because there is no risk-free process where it comes to developing a nation. And this is a man who rose above self. Of course, Sadada was in alone. When I say he was in alone, I'm not reflecting on the existence of cabinet ministers, but I'm reflecting on the existence of opposition parties that made sure that um, everything was not said and then the recipients would only nod or say yes, because this is about a nation. The beauty of democracy is difference in political opinion, which he definitely encouraged. Well, we all know there were dark chapters in our history, the 1991 abortive coup d'etat. We went through that also. And then we went through that. 
1994, again, the years of the Republic were changed by another coup d'etat. Um, the first one was, of course, led by civilians, and then it was squashed off based on agreements we have with other countries. Well, that shows that Gambia is a blessed country, you know, protected by Allah himself. And then in 1994, we started again, rolled through for 22 years. We can account for many odds, but we can also account for things that we all collectively did together in terms of infrastructure and everything. So we have gone through that. Some call it the first republic. But there are scholars are giving it out that actually we can only claim to be independent on the 24th of April 1970 when Gambia became a republic. So you see, all that is why they say the beauty of democracy is difference in political opinion. So today we have gone through uh, the first republic, as some would call it, the second republic, which is the time of President Yahya Jame. And today we are in the Third Republic, the time of President Adam Abaro. Um, in all that, what, what can we learn? Well, what we can learn is that leadership comes and goes, but the nation stays. State come and, states come and go, but the people stay. So this is why we don't say we are celebrating the 58th anniversary of government. We say we are celebrating the 58th anniversary of Gambia's independence. So that is why it is a very important occasion. It is an occasion where reflections are expected, where we should sit and reflect um, on one aspect, which is what have we all done for Gambia, or what should we do for Gambia or what are we doing for Gambia and what should we be doing for Gambia? Because at the end of the day, uh, Gambia has done everything for us. So we should give back. And giving back to Gambia is more like savings. I mean, it's a savings account because Gambia would not use what we are working on or the services we are rendering it is us, the citizens, who will come back and consume our results. If we pay tax, we are the ones who will use what we have gained out of those taxes paid or the taxes levied. Um, it's not Gambia itself. But we all agree that uh, Gambia, as small as it is, has what some powerful societies in this world don't have. There are still societies in this globe or on this globe that are struggling to be UN member states. But Gambia has been able to achieve that. We are a viable state. We are a United Nations member state. We have territory. We have a flag. We have a national anthem. We have currency. And we have citizens. We definitely qualify as one to be a nation. Now, nation building doesn't have retirement. Well, people hear about the age of 60 or whatever arguments people want to advance here in Gambia. But when it comes to national duty, there is no retirement. You will serve from the day you were born to the day you are buried. That's definitely where what is caught between the two Bs, being born and being buried. So that is why there is no retirement when it comes to national I mean, duty. Um, and also, there shouldn't be anything selfish when it comes to national interest. We should nourish what is selfless in us. We have to rise above self. So this is why it is an occasion of reflections, and it is also an occasion of reviving or refreshing the button of, uh, what would I call it, of patriotism, where we will all remember that our duty is to serve, and the service we are rendering is not something what should ex expect accolades for, or insignias for, or being recognized here and there. No, just serve, because what matters is what you do. Um, 200, 200 years from now, all of us will be, I mean, under the ground. I mean, you know, and that would be it. Our company at the time will be 
you know, the grave will be termites, will be worms, will be everything else. But what remains here is now what will be talked about us. You know, we are talking about many people who are no longer here, okay? And they are gone, they are buried under the ground. But what remains is what have they done or what were they doing? And what have they left behind in terms of speeches and deeds, you know? So that is why uh, there is one thing I always keep telling people or myself is that if we really want to rediscover the true meaning of a nation and what is expected of us as citizens, is that we should all be colorblind, we should all be party blind, we should all be ethnic blind. All we should recognize is that our name is citizen and our last name is republic. Other than that, anything else we do is contrary to what will build a nation. And we are endowed with many things. You know, I keep telling this to people that some people will say, I don't know, what have we done to our creator in Africa? I said, no. What have we done to ourselves? We are here. It is hot, but not as hot, as dry as in the Arab world, as in the Saudi. And here you can see, regardless of how it looks like there, they've discovered oil. So there is no part of the world that Allah hasn't given something. It depends on the people there to use their minds to discover what they have been offered from up there and from down, because Allah is everywhere. So we Gambians, my word to every Gambian, beginning with myself, is this. Let us all rise above self. Let us all understand that when we talk about independence, the independence should begin with the mindset, should begin with the attitude. Some people have seen uh, reason of thinking that it is the colonialists that can help us. Well, that is not a good mindset. And that's not a mindset created by leadership. It's created by you, the individual asking for it. So what will change that mindset is that light, that flare that we will, will hold through ignorance, sensitize people for them to know that Gambia doesn't belong to anybody else other than them. Every person should consider him or herself a teacher, a doctor, a soldier, a police officer, a customs officer, intelligence officer, a president, a cabinet minister, a nurse, a doctor, a cobbler, a blacksmith, a farmer, a masoner, and a journalist, and everything. The moment you look at yourself like Gambia belongs to me, and then the numbers game comes into play, where it will be majority carries the vote. But who are the majority? The citizens. You carry the vote, they should help you carry the law. And then that would be it. So thank you very much to every Gambian citizen, um, home and abroad. That was my message through Upright TV today on our 58th independence celebration.